Kanye West. I want to preface all of this by saying there might be some clips where Kanye West says some ridiculous shit. I don't endorse those views or agree with those views, obviously. I'm going to have to tiptoe around a lot of this because Twitch is not a platform for adults. I'll try and substantiate everything content-wise as much as I can and and look at everything we need to look at but i don't even know if for example because there's so many like banned and unpersoned individuals in this story along the line i don't even know if i can show pictures of them or video videos of them or whatever so i don't know i'm gonna try let's start at the beginning and i just want to say this before we get into everything else yes yay has said things that are unquestionably anti-semitic not just anti-semitic i would go so far as to say they're at the extreme end of anti-semitism initially he lent into tropes around jewish people and jewish people being overrepresented in the media and jewish people being overrepresented in the entertainment industry and he ended up on Infowars. This is where the story ends, essentially. And I believe his career ends. And he ended up on Infowars, essentially saying Hitler was a, a person too. And he had a lot of good ideas. So the yay stuff has been unbelievably sad because the guy is clearly, unquestionably, seriously mentally ill. And I'm not qualified to diagnose but I will say this, he has publicly spoke about having bipolar uh, disorder. But at this stage, it's more than that, in my opinion. I don't think it's just bipolar disorder. I don't think this is just a manic episode. I think this is, you're, you're at the paranoid schizophrenic stage when you start talking about cabals of people, shadowy conspiracy theories. He said some fucking crazy stuff in an interview uh, with Tucker Carlson where he was talking about they planted fake children in my house to deep, to like program my own children and just mad shit. The, guy, the guy's gone. And we end up back to the same old problem of journalistic ethics and i made this point on social media and all the crazies immediately came out spoiler never quote tweet or reply to a tweet of elon musk or anything just don't it's not worth your while i had about 50 replies of just lunacy because i said all the media outlets that have put a microphone under his mouth need to do some soul searching and to elaborate on that point and explain it when people are having very clear mental health problems, they are going to say and do things that might not be representative of who they are and might harm them long term. And we seem to understand that when it comes to like people in our family or individuals, celebrities, it's really weird. Like Kanye West has been ill desperately ill for a long time and i'm not saying he can't be mentally ill and be an anti-semite i think definitely that can be the case but something changed very recently and his focus on jewish people has really come to a head and manifested itself in malign in, in a very malignant form the last few years and certainly the last four or five months so it's one of those where even the biggest yay fan at this stage has to and like you you can't defend anything he said or anything he's done recently it's it is indefensible even from a viewpoint of this is a mentally ill person but people continually went back to the well even after the first initial times he said anti-semitic stuff and they said hey want to do another podcast want to do another podcast and he kept going and he kept saying the things and he wasn't walking it back and people just kept allowing him and platforming him and that to me is unconscionable the guy is sick he needs an intervention i've literally been saying this for years you can go funnily enough there's an episode of best of by the numbers with the clip in and i know this because someone just left a comment on it the other day and i said can he's gonna go off the rails he's going to go off the rails 
and he needs to be in an institution and he needs to be receiving medicine until he levels the fuck out but everyone goes oh you know he's a genius he self-admittedly doesn't take his medication he says that he says he doesn't you'll find this with a lot of bipolar people one of the pri i've known bipolar people multiple bipolar people one of the primary things they don't like is the medication that stops you getting manic and stops you getting depressed is it levels you out to such a degree when they're giving you strong doses of it that you feel like you're not feeling anything at all and if you're a creative person people feel like it dulls their creative muse and they're not able to get to the parts that they need to in their you know psychological landscape to draw the little parts of creativity out to create their best work people get incredibly frustrated with it so certainly someone in a creative field will feel very dulled by the type of medication you take for bipolar disorder you know stuff like lithium and things like that so he self-admittedly doesn't take his medication that immediately should be letting everybody know out there this guy is publicly saying i don't take my meds like i am i am and i'm off the reservation right now saying crazy shit why on earth are people saying now's the time to interview yay he's hanging around with fucking bums like absolute losers that just would never have been in his orbit this is what bottoming out this is what spiraling looks like so i want you to take that into consideration while we talk about this and understand i fully condemn everything he said i don't want to platform his ideas beyond talking about his ideas to repudiate them and this is simply an internet happening that is a newsworthy story that i am talking about in my capacity as a guy that cuts through media spin on twitch for a relatively modest audience that's it and has to be said because of the world we live in i know that should all go without saying well, there'll also be some history lessons along the way because what's really interesting in all of this is so many of the anti-semitic conspiratorial tropes if you just knew history would easily be explained like you just have to go read a book and it's all there it's not a conspiracy it's not a shadowy cabal it's like it, it, it's just very obvious why jewish people are overrepresented in some sectors it's so not mad or insane or controversial to say it and even with that over representation like as i said for example he was holding up that fucking 4chan meme where it's like look at all the jewish executives at these companies and it's like okay now zoom out look at the industry as a whole and you realize that even with that over representation it's still under 20 percent <laughs> so think about that there's no empirical substance to it. It's just garbage. It's just it's just conspiratorial garbage for fucking people that need to create a conspiracy that they can point to to explain, you know, why things maybe haven't panned out uh, their way. Anyway, this is where it all starts, and I, I didn't have a I didn't have a lot of time to, to to get this pulled together as detailed as i would like but i wanted to get it done as soon as possible because I, uh, i've got other appointments coming up through the week so i thought best to get it done now so apologies if like some things appear slightly out of order or the timeline's not 100 percent polished but this is certainly the start and this is paris fashion week and Kanye West unveiled a White Lives Matter t-shirt at uh, Paris uh, Fashion Week, which uh, caused quite a stir. This was back in early October. It was just a surprise fashion show, and he did it with Candace Owens. And you can see there, they wore these, like, there was hoodies and sweaters, and they both appeared as two black people with the phrase White Lives Matter obviously a parody of the black lives matter slogan popularized by the movement that came out of the extrajudicial murder of george floyd by police and so i won't get into candace owens one of the fucking wildest grifters 
of all time. And I won't even get into debating the phraseology or even why it drives people so wild. I just don't think we need to get into that to tell this story. But the bottom line is it's a deliberately provocative phrase for a number of reasons. Uh, obviously, the first thing is that it is essentially a parody, a satire and a downplaying of a movement that was designed to draw attention to marginalized groups in America believing they were being mistreated by power structures within America. And obviously as well, the stupidest thing anything does is if you go Black Lives Matter and then somebody goes, yeah, well, white lives, white lives matter too. And yeah, no one's saying they don't. There was so much bickering about the the phrase and it just seems like loaded in again like almost like inherent stupidity and the the third point is for whatever reason kanye west has had this strange flirtation with the fringes of right-wing thinking for a while now as i said i mean this isn't him just wearing a marga hat and saying i've got dragon energy and i would support trump this now is he's got into the the realms of groiper alt-right land he's a hundred percent there and so when you take that into consideration a phrase like white lives matter becomes problematic when it wouldn't be in its own instance because those individual groups aggrandize white lives prioritize white lives express a preference towards white lives it is the classic nation of white supremacy and by the way candace owens has said many of the same things kanye did and somehow still remains a mainstream political figure it doesn't feel like it was that long ago she said something ridiculous about hitler and yet she's on fox news she hasn't been cancelled she remains in a very lucrative grifting position this from somebody who rose to prominence around gamergate if you can believe it so anyway they did the surprise fashion show they unveiled the phrase everybody got up in arms about it said it was dangerous blah 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 uh, then for just extra ridiculousness and i actually think this is like a, an unacceptably cruel thing to do um and i'll explain why in a moment but after they did the fashion show, Ye took all of the hundreds of White Lives Matter cloth clothing that he'd had printed. And then they went to Skid Row and filmed him giving the clothes out to homeless people. Right? This obviously here, uh, 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 Shirley Rains, who works at a non-profit called Beauty to the Streets, went out. And sure, she's probably capitalizing on it a bit because nonprofits need attention. But she went out and was giving out clothes as well. Because think about this. Even though this is, the, I'm sure, the high quality clothes made by a guy who has a, you know, history of fashion design. That slogan is so politically charged that, you know, you give it to a white person, it takes on a very sudden, it takes on a different dynamic all of a sudden, doesn't it? Wearing something like that in LA, right, in, a, in an impoverished area in LA, it's an inherently dangerous thing to do, I would go so far as to argue. I think there are going to be some people that aren't going to, aren't going to want to see that. And so what you're doing is you are presenting a homeless person with the option of, do you want some high quality warm clothing? By the way, it says something really reprehensible on it. And it just reminded me of that fucking scene from Die Hard 3, if you know which scene I'm talking about, where John McClane has to go to a you know, particularly black part of the city and he's wearing a, he's wearing a sa nothing but a sandwich board and it says something very nasty on it. And it's like, why would you do that to another human being? So I didn't like this at all. Though, again, this is obviously before Ye went full crazy. Well, crazier. People were trying to defend this. Oh, look, he's following the Bible. He's giving the clothes away. God be praised. I'm like, no, this is a really cruel thing to do. This isn't just giving out any, cl any clothes. This isn't just giving away chunks of his wealth to help the poor this is forcing people into difficult unpleasant choices 
Homeless people have to make difficult and pleasant choices every day of their lives. Adding another one to the pile isn't good work at all. It's not kind. It's not empathetic. Then, because of the brouhaha, Fox News decided they wanted to get him on the show. Tucker Carlson tonight, that's the most watched news show on cable news. And as I said, my thoughts on Tucker Carlson are that he'll do nine shows where it's like, yeah, that's not that bad. Yeah, those people are a bit ridiculous. Yeah, this is what this is something worth talking about. And then he'll slide in the tenth, won't he? Yeah, this is a bit strange. Yeah, not coming along for this one, actually, Tucker. No, this uh ugh, this feels a bit weird and horrible, actually. Yeah. That's just the state of play uh, in in the American media landscape. But one thing Republicans love, and one thing Republicans will always love, are eccentric loud black republicans black republicans with prominence and a following why because it will insulate them against any claims of racism now obviously accusations of racism they get thrown around all the time you're a racist you're a racist you're a racist oh but i've got black friends you can't have black friends you can't say that it's the worst excuse ever you're a racist you're definitely racist i've gone through it Myself, again, I, I find it really hurtful and upsetting to be called that. And I know I'm not that, right? But if you came through the culture wars and you had any presence from 2014 onwards or online, you've been called, uh, but, but you thought some of those Berkeley students were a bit ridiculous, you were a racist. <laughs> That's it. And so I, I get that. Not all allegations of racism have, you know, have substance. But some allegations certainly do and certainly there are republicans that are racist and have said outrageous things uh, that you can't even begin to fathom and so republicans love to be able to take a black person who follows their ideals and put them front and center and i said many many times i said many many times that you need to get off the yay train because it's going to crash. But Republicans can't. Because Ye is not just a Republican. He's a devout Christian. Obviously the religious right loves that too. He was pro-Trump. Obviously they're going to love that. If they happen to be in the MAGA camp. And he's not just a popular black musician. He's one of the most iconic people on planet Earth. It's fantastic for them. So... Just like Brokeback Mountain, I can't quit you, yay. I can't quit you. And they kept putting him front and center. And I knew where it was going. <laughs> I knew. Because the guy is unstable. Didn't stop Tucker Carlson interviewing him. Welcome oh, no. to Tucker okay. Carlson tonight. Kanye West, now known as Ye, is one of the best-selling musical artists in the world. He's also in recent years become a celebrated and very highly paid fashion designer. And of course, for a decade, he was well known to TV audiences as an in-law of the Kardashian family. But it's West's latest incarnation as a kind of Christian evangelist that brought us to his office in Los Angeles today for the interview you're about to see. Days ago, during Fashion Week in Paris, West, accompanied by his friend Candace Owens, unveiled a T-shirt that read simply, White Lives Matter. The response from the fashion industry and international media was instantaneous and uniform. Shock horror, rage. There is no excuse for this, thundered the New York Times. West is legitimizing extremism, shrieked Rolling Stone, etc., etc. What was strikingly missing from the coverage, however, was any explanation for why West did this. What was the t-shirt about? No one seemed to think to ask him, much less to listen to what he had to say. Instead, the enemies of his ideas dismissed West, as they have for years, as mentally ill. Too crazy to take seriously. Look away, ignore him. He's a mental patient. There's nothing to see here. But is West crazy? You can judge for yourself yes. if you watch what we're about to show you. He has his own ideas. We can say that. Creative people tend to. That's why they're artists, not actuaries. His freeform social media posts give the impression of a man channeling his rawest emotions right onto Instagram. The effect can be jarring, and it's often used as ammunition against him in the battle for influence over the minds of America's young people. And that battle is intense. But crazy? That was not our conclusion. In fact, we've rarely heard a man speak so honestly and so movingly about what he believes. But again, 
You can judge for yourself. Here it is. So you just came from Paris Fashion Week. You just landed, and yeah. the lanyard's still on from it, and there's a photograph on it. What is that? It's a photograph of a baby's ultrasound. Why is that? And that you designed that? Yes. Why? What does that mean? Uh, it just represents life. I'm pro-life. Boy, so you wear it on a badge. What, what kind of... We'll leave it there. You, you can go and watch the whole thing if you really want to see something sad and unsettling. You can tell, I think, just from his demeanor and the intonation in his voice, like, it's just not okay. It's not so much about what he's saying, although, as we'll get to later, it certainly becomes that. But what was going on in this Tucker Carlson interview was really interesting. They interviewed him for two hours. They disseminated the interview in, uh, like, chunks. They played it across the Tucker Carlson tonight, back-to-back, uh, -to -back, two nights. But then it turned out that um, they actually redacted parts of the interview. They selectively edited out crazy things he said and anti-Semitic things he said. And remember, at the end of this, Tucker Carlson came out and said, he appeared to me absolutely perfectly sane. Kind of like a parallel with the whole uh, Fetterman thing over on the left. So the full raw video footage of the uh, interview eventually leaked. And uh, this is just Vice here. Watch the disturbing Kanye interview clips that Tucker Carlson didn't put on air. It sets the scene, um, and I'll read you some of the quotes. Fox News recently had a two-part interview between Tucker Carlson and Ye, the artist formerly known as Kanye West. Motherboard has obtained portions of the interview that were edited out of the final broadcast motherboard is the tech vertical for vice uh, these include numerous anti-semitic sentiments from yay a strange and lengthy digression about fake children he claimed to planted in his house to manipulate his own children and a statement he's vaccinated against covid19 Carlson used the interview, which was presented as a piece of landmark television, to hit on a few of Fox News' favorite boogeymen with Ye's enthusiastic participation, the Clintons, former President Obama, COVID restrictions, and of course, the Cardassians. But what the Tucker Carlson team chose to leave out is just as revealing. In the version of the interview that made it to air, Ye described what he said was pressure not to support Donald Trump when the latter was a candidate, called the singer Lizzo clinically unhealthy for a wait and tried to explain his decision to appear at Paris Fashion Week with conservative pundis, pundit Candace Owens in matching White Lives Matter shirts. Carlson praised the interview as interesting, deep, provocative, and aired nearly two full hours of it over the course of two nights. Do you feel at times you were manipulated by political forces through your wife? Carlson asked hopefully at one point in a fairly representative piece of footage. Ye responded he was unaware of how close Kim Kardashian was to the Clintons during the time they were married. And by the way, this type of talk along with his anti-Semitism is why I think whatever illness he's suffering from has morphed into... Um, morphed into something way more sinister. Because it's like, listen, yes... Hillary Clinton's a fucking criminal. <laughs> oh, yeah, they all are. Of course they are, right? But when you start getting into this idea of the Clintons are going to have me suicided, now you're getting a bit wackadoo. Like, now, now, now you're really out there. Anyway, a simple statement of fact from Ye, I was vaccinated, was edited out of a part of the conversation about COVID. Carlson has repeatedly used his show to air false and dangerous claims aimed at discouraging his viewers from getting vaccinated. The other footage that didn't air specifically includes numerous asides about Jewish people. Um, Ye has displayed an intense negative fixation on Jews. Uh, both his Instagram and Twitter accounts, we'll get to that in a moment, were locked in recent days. He appeared to suggest in an Instagram post that rapper Diddy is controlled by Jews. Not long after, he promised in a tweet he would go DEFCON free on Jewish people. In his interview with Carlson, Ye said, Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger, a known eugenics, as he put it, he obviously meant eugenicist, uh, created Planned Parenthood parenthood with the kkk to control the jew population which again that isn't even the correct conspiracy theory talking point it's meant to be the the black population and this is how you know he's not even he's not even getting the you know this is like when john tron debated destiny he's not even getting the right in the right wrong information you know what i mean like it's not even the right 
conspiracy talking point. When I say Jew, I mean the 12 lost tribes of Judah. The blood of Christ, who the people known as the race black really are. Yeah, he added. This is who our people are. The blood of Christ. This is a Christian, is my belief. Now, that part is where he's brought it back. He has been increasingly parroting talking points from a black supremacist group called the Black Israelites. You might have heard uh, of the Black Israelites. They have multiple offshoots. I don't know if the Hoteps are an offshoot of the Black Israelite movement, but let me just try and explain the Black Israelites to you. Black Israelites are African Americans, predominantly. I, I don't think they have any foothold uh, in any other uh, country. They believe they are the original descendants of the ancient Israelites that obviously used to live in israel and um they believe that they were usurped and forced out by jewish people who as we know them now white jewish people and so they became the jews as we know jewish people but they stole the territory and that denomination from black people and actually, a tr true Jewish people are black. Now, there's other aspects to this. I don't think the black Israelites are the people that believe in Yakub. I think that's something else. Let me just get that. I think that's Nation of Islam, right? Nation of Islam is the Yakubian people. So, just to explain that, because uh, there's black Israelites, there's Hoteps, and there's... The nation of islam the nation of islam believe that all humans were black historically and then they a mad scientist who has a massive head i'll i'll, I'll show you that's yakub right that's you that's yakub the nation of islam believes that yakub who's a super genius scientist decided to create life and he created the white man but the white person was possessed by a devil and so we conspired against the the creators and we essentially were able to overthrow them and proliferate and we unleashed all the evils on the world because of yakub's hubris but nation of islam and black israelites why they have some nominally uh similar ideas they're not the same and neither are the hoteps just so so you know so anyway there has been a, a, a recent sort of debate about uh, the Black Israelite movement because obviously Kyrie Irving linked to a movie, a supposed documentary. I don't even know if I can say the title, but you'll, you'll be able to find it. It's got the word Hebrews in it. He linked to a documentary which is distributed on Amazon, and along with the movie, the uh, books of the movie are distributed on Amazon as well. And he uh, just tweeted it out and said, you should watch this. And then obviously in that documentary was Holocaust denial. And so Kyrie Irving was asked, do you recant this statement? Do you want to apologize? And he said, I just tweeted a link to something that's being sold on Amazon. And so he got suspended for 10 games. So the black Israelite movement, the idea that black people are the original Jews, this has actually been picked up. There's also some other musical artists, not as big as Ye. I believe there was a hip hop song released called Ye Did Nothing Wrong, which obviously this is pre the Info Wars meltdown, but still a yikes ultimately. And that's where we are. Now, the real story at this point is Fox edited this out. They edited this out. They edited out his claims about being being a Jew and the black Israelites. Anything that uh, uh, crossed the line, they took it out. There was another one here. He said, Ye used a strange metaphor when talking about black people judging one another, telling Carson, think about us judging each other on how white we could talk would be like, you know, a Jewish person judging another Jew Jewish person on how good they danced or something. I mean, that's probably like a bad example, and people are going to get mad at that shit. A few moments later, he added, I probably want to edit that out. At another point, uh, when complaining that his children are going to school that celebrates Kwanzaa, and again, Kwanzaa is an um, American-created equivalent of 
Christmas that was brought about by uh, displaced Africans in, in America. It's relatively new. I think it's only a few decades old. But anyway, Kwanzaa. Uh, I prefer my kids' new Hanukkah than Kwanzaa. At least it will come with some financial engineering. And this, of course, relates to the idea that Jewish people uh, are somehow uh in charge of the financial system fox cut that out too so as i said the story here is fox deceptively edited this out and then had took a carlson say yeah he's such an int i'm such an enlightening guy so interesting and inform and totally lucid and the shit libs have the nerve to say he's crazy and it's like my dude you don't even know now well right about this time he also had his instagram banned as it was already talked about in that uh, previous article he had it suspended this is the nbc news coverage of it yay formerly known as kanye west published an alleged interaction with sean diddy combs with the caption jesus is a jew that wasn't why it was removed he specifically said to diddy that uh, yeah you are uh, you are being controlled by jewish people in fact i can I think i've got the exact uh phrase yeah he said this ain't a game i'm a use you as an example to show the jewish people that told you to call me that no one can threaten or influence me i told you this is war now gone get you some business uh, that's what he said and that was uh that was removed then this is where things start to accelerate and probably people should have been eh, hang on a minute i'm a bit sleepy tonight but when i wake up i'm going death con free three because he didn't realize the term is death con death con obviously being the term for military response uh, on a scale of one to five i'm going to go death con three on G and then in capitals jewish people the funny thing is i actually can't be anti-semitic because black people are actually jew also you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda well there it is folks i mean like at this point it's just put a pin in it right like why anybody would rush to platform him when he's saying that it's got it all De De death con three De obviously death con three on jewish people i'm gonna target jewish people with some shit when i wake up in the morning uh weird thing to tweet before you go to bed and obviously he tweeted this and then literally just went to bed in his brain he thought this is fine this is fine but also you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who, who ever opposes your agenda that's the classic anti-semitic trope right there isn't it that's the classic anti-Semitic trope right there. That's the one. There's a cabal of Jewish people controlling things. That's the fucking, that's it. That's the anti-Semitism right there. I saw people try and defend this tweet. <laughs> like, unironically. Like, people were going, well, no, listen. And I'm like, guys, no. <laughs> like, no. This is anti-semitism i'm afraid <laughs> like that that is it but people people still tried to fucking defend it so he loses his twitter account he loses his instagram account at this stage it's pretty bad he gets to do another interview this is about the 11th of october kanye west interview pulled over more hate speech this is all post fox that this is going on by the way after tucker carlson went <laughs> I interviewed him and he seemed perfectly fine. Spoiler, we edited out all the anti-Semitism, but surely he would never say the anti-Semitic things again. This was uh, an upcoming episode of the YouTube talk show, The Shop Uninterrupted, and it just got scrapped. They didn't air it. He went on the show, apparently just said a bunch of weird, fucked up anti-Semitic things. So they said, right, well, can't air it. At that point, you had other companies coming out saying, we don't want to work with Kanye West anymore. We're not going to do it there was balenciaga who were by the way at the same time this was going on the fashion uh company balenciaga they had their own problem because they'd done a photo shoot putting children in bdsm situations with weird satanic easter eggs in the photos so they had their own shit going on the last thing they needed was yay 
They said they weren't going to work with him. Go, guys, you can look that up. I can't show you that on Twitch. Uh, but yeah, they had things where it was like Baal instead of Baal, B-A-A-L, you know, the old, I think he was an Abrahamic uh, god originally, that after the proliferation of Christianity, I think over time he got turned into a demon, probably because of, con of a conflation linguistically between Baal and Beelzebub, uh, but anyway, he's now widely considered a demon, Baal. But they had uh, on, like, police tape, do not cross type stuff in these scenes, in this photo shoot, Baal and Siaga, like, alluding to demonic uh, possession. But anyway, whatever, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, yeah, I'm being pretty tame in terms of describing what was there. Uh, you can go look it up for yourself. But anyway, they were like, can't fuck with yay no more. So that's got to go. Creative Artists Agency ditched him. His talent agency ditched him. The JP Morgan Bank said uh, that they didn't want his money anymore. <laughs> Which, I know, I, I, I got to be honest. I don't like the trend of banks. Banks, banks, banks. I don't like the trend of banks taking away people's money and the, and the rights to have a bank account. Because if you're not going to do it for Epstein, if you're going to take Epstein money, then you've kind of set your stall out that all money's acceptable. So I don't know. But anyway, JP Morgan ditched him. And um, Gap was the other one. Gap uh, ditched him uh, as well. Now at this time, Adidas, or Adidas, as, uh, we always said Adidas in the UK, but uh, the Americans say Adidas. Um, don't know what Germans say. I think Germans say it like we do, but whatever. They were under loads and loads and loads of pressure to uh, push back over this stuff and make a statement because they were obviously doing his sneakers. And it was a huge deal when that partnership was announced. And obviously, it's a German company. It's a German company that don't want to break it to you. Might have its own dubious past in terms of uh, it, the foundational aspects of it. And in the end, yeah, they 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 pieced the fuck out. Uh, and they said, well, we just can't do it. So uh, this is the report here on the BBC. Clothing giant Adidas has cut ties with rapper Ye, known as Kanye West, saying it does not tolerate anti-Semitism and any other sort of hate speech. The Adidas Yeezy brand in collaboration with Mr. West was put under review after he showed a White Lives Matter t-shirt design at Paris Fashion Week. Days later, the rapper posted anti-Semitic comments on his Twitter account. His products will be pulled from sale with immediate effect. Uh, the sportswear brand has previously said the Yeezy brand collaboration with Ye was one of the most successful in the company's history. Cutting the partnership means Adidas will make a net loss of £217 million in 2022 as a result. Uh, in a statement on Tuesday, Adidas wrote, Adidas does not tolerate anti-Semitism and any other sort of hate speech. Ye's recent comments and actions have been unacceptable, hateful and dangerous, and they violate the company's values of diversity, inclusion, mutual respect and fairness. All gone. Proving that it continued to be a manic episode or worse, he then turned up at Sketches, unannounced and uninvited, demanding to speak to the president of the company to pitch his Yeezys to them. The shoe brand Sketches claims it had to escort Ye from its corporate offices in Los Angeles after he showed up unannounced and uninvited. The firm added it had no intention of working with the rapper and designer. The brand said, we condemn his recent divisive remarks and do not tolerate anti-Semitism or any other form of hate speech. We again stress that West showed up unannounced and uninvited. And uh, this isn't the first time he's pulled someone like this. Like, obviously, when uh, he was reputed to be having financial problems, and I, I believe it got so bad, people were speculating if he was going to file for bankruptcy. That was when he did that really weird, fucked-up pitch to Zuckerberg of uh, Facebook, where he was like, just wrote synergy on a piece of paper, you know, some other buzzwords, and didn't even explain what the product was. Just give me some money, essentially, and I'll make Facebook amazing or something. I don't know. 
But um, these are the acts of a desperately ill person. And a person, as you'll see, clearly in free fall and about to get uh, exploited. Next up, just all these weird podcast appearances that were coming. Like, I don't know why anyone is wanting to, like, interview him at this time. Uh, this is Variety here. He went on the uh, Revolt TV's Drink Champs and just said a bunch of fucked up shit. The host of it, Victor, said, I made a mistake doing the Kanye interview. I could come out here and say this was Kanye's thing and that's it. And guess what? People will forgive me and I could get away with it. But that's not what I'm doing. I feel like I failed my people. I called the Breakfast Club uh, because I wanted to apologize. Uh, I want to be honest, I support freedom of speech, I support anybody not being censored, but I do not support anybody being hurt. I did not realise that his statements uh, made on the show were so hurtful. You have to realise that it was the first five minutes of the show. Like when he walked in, he told my producer that if we stop filming at any point, he'll walk out. I didn't want a Birdman moment like when he walked out, so I wanted to let the man speak. And I believe on that podcast, he said some really unpalatable things about George Floyd. Then you had the Lex Friedman podcast was another podcast and just a needlessly hostile response from Ye. They said Lex Friedman grilled, grilled him. That's not how I would characterize it, but Lex was in a fucking bad spot. Now, listen, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to go so far as to say I sympathize with Lex Friedman on this. People having him on the show at this point fucked up. They fucked up for two reasons. They fucked up because he's mentally ill. They fucked up because the shit he's saying is outrageous and unacceptable. And if you platform that, it comes at a cost. So Lex asked him what I thought was a pretty soft question. He simply asked him, do you have someone in your life to call you out on your bullshit? And obviously what he means by that is... You're going through a d d divorce, you're separated, you know, it seems that your entourage has changed drastically. I can also tell you firsthand about how damaging having a loved one with serious mental health problems can be. It is so draining, it is wearing on the relationship. When somebody is seriously mentally ill, you know they're ill, and you're trying to care for them. But the nature of a serious mental illness can make it absolutely incredibly difficult because essentially you can't explain to them you're ill. You, you know, in a lot of instances, they're going to just behave in the way they're going to behave. And it's frustrating. It's, it's hurtful. It's, you know, it's emotional. And a lot of people in your life, they're not along for that ride. I mean, like you might think... You might think you've got special people in your life, but let me tell you, if you ever get terminally ill to the point where it's undignifying or mentally ill to the point it is very difficult to be around you, you will very rapidly realize how many people actually do give a shit. I'm talking about change your diaper levels of love. I'm talking about talk you down off a ledge when you're threatening to kill yourself for the fucking 12th time that month kind of love. I'm talking about that. And you don't get much of that. You get a handful of it in your life if you're lucky. And so I feel very sorry for the people in Ye's life that have had a kind that have had to kind of let him go and are watching this from a distance. I think Kim must have had the patience of a saint, I think. Probably lots of his friends that have since peaced out. And now it seems especially sad because he's surrounded by yes men and people who will exploit him and people who want to ride on his coattails and they don't and, and bad actors who don't care about the things he's saying. They just want to get to be part of the yay spotlight, part of the yay show. And that's all he's got left now. It seems. And it's fucked up. Again, very reminiscent of all the people that surrounded, you know, Mike Tyson. Just the worst people imaginable. Just absolute scum. All just looking to exploit a troubled person. But Lex simply said, do you have anyone left to call you on your bullshit? And Ye said, what's my bullshit? And Lex said, I'll tell you your bullshit. The stuff you've said recently about the Jewish people controlling the media said, I grew up in the Soviet Union, I'm Jewish, parts of my family perished in the Holocaust in Nazi Germany, 
uh, Friedman said at one point in the interview. I've got to push back when you say Jewish media. There's an echo of a pain that people feel. The right wing is not to say that there's Jewish control of the media, he added. West shouted back, that's incorrect though. That's a fucking lie. There is. And they did come and bully me and prove the point. The rapper said he had a friend suggest he visit a Holocaust museum, to which he replied, let's visit our Holocaust museum, Planned Parenthood. West alleged that abortion was to blame for half the deaths in the black community. He had previously made similar statements, including the ones redacted from Fox, claiming abortion is a form of population control in America. So that was a fractious interview. But again, like even when faced with a Jewish person saying, I have family who died in the Holocaust, maybe maybe like you shouldn't be so flippant about this anti-semitism stuff and maybe if you had people in your life who cared about you they wouldn't let you say these things because they're not nice things to say and ultimately people will push back and it's going to cost you and so Lex said that and he's absolutely right he's on the money but he simultaneously platformed a desperately ill person so you know don't know how I feel about it all another interview this time with the paparazzi things are getting worse uh kanye west said uh he was being teamed up on by jewish executives and he literally held up a picture of that fucking famous 4chan meme you've all seen literally held it up and he said these are entertainment companies all the executives in red are jewish people and if you've ever been on 4chan you've seen that meme now this is where I'll give everyone a just a little bit of history and a little bit of context. It, by the way, it used to be par for the course that you could say like, you know, oh yes, uh, there is a, a, a strong Jewish presence in Hollywood. And we, I think we were in a better place. I think in terms of anti-Semitism, I think by any metric you can say we've had a backslide seems to have got worse jewish hate crimes are on the increase particularly in new york a city with a large jewish population i think they're up something like 400 percent uh year on year um or rather from last year to this year uh obviously we're seeing anti-semitic thought being mainstreamed by sports figures entertainment figures it's fucking ridiculous uh, frankly jewish people in the entertainment industry what people don't know is because people don't they don't know the history so jewish people when the entertainment industry uh sort of first started to take off when motion pictures were first introduced the motion picture industry was looked down on by the wealthy which at that time they didn't have any minority group in american society and it's a phenomenon that particularly happened in american society because of this particular perfect storm i'm going to talk about it was looked down on by the elite level ruling class and even the middle class it was seen as a silly frivolous industry not a lot of uh, upside to it and so it, the people that worked there were much like in other social areas uh were people that took those kind of jobs and that was a lot of jewish people there was the early entertainment industry was created by jewish people of eastern european descent and that was that was the people that run it at the start and they just were the ones willing to work there there was a lot of italians too because those were the people that occupied that social strata at that time then obviously what we know now motion pictures isn't a frivolous industry it was a growth industry and that growth got turbocharged post-world war ii obviously we've had the advent of sound and talking pictures all of this stuff's happened there think about what america did it world in world war ii america accepted people fleeing hitler's germany do you think there was maybe some jews in that oh yeah of course they had they're the people who had the most reason to flee nazi germany and so when those people went to america they ended up getting some of the brightest and best talents across all spheres i'm talking medicine science but yes the arts entertainment 
uh, it wasn't just Jewish people. It was there was a lot of German people that were politically opposed to Hitler that fled to America, and they were typically, you know, wealthy, well educated. Uh, they had particular skill sets, and so they went out there. And they, you know, musicians, composers. There was a ton of like German composers that come in and did music for the uh, motion, uh, early motion pictures. So obviously, it got it gets turbocharged at that time. Effectively, you had an industry where other established American industries didn't welcome Jewish people. They were looked down upon in the society. Then you had this one industry where Jewish people weren't just welcome, they were essentially in charge. And yes, over time, it got an over-representation of uh, Jewish people. But as I said earlier, right, it's an over-representation based on the fact that Jewish people are 0.2% or something like the global population and but it's still under 20 percent of those executives that kanye is holding up and crowing about and screeching about it's still something like less than 20 percent of those executives in the totality of the industry that are jewish so non jewish people are overwhelmingly the majority and so the idea of some sort of conspiracy uh is absurd it's just frankly absurd also these things can simply be uh explained away with like if i'm a jewish person and my family and my family follow me in my line of work and i happen to work in the entertainment industry i'm going to give them a job at the entertainment company i work at a lot of these things can just be explained away by just i don't know nepotism gives it a nasty sound to it but that's that's it. Don't even get me started on the bullshit about they they work in banks when literally, like talking from a medieval England perspective, we forbid Christians to handle money in like the twelve hundreds. I think it was like King Edward. He like said Christians couldn't handle money. They couldn't loan money, but the Talmud allows jewish people to uh, loan money to to gentiles to non-jews it, it's it's so fucking dumb the whole anti-semitic tropes thing it's like just read a little bit of history and you can figure all this out for yourself don't get a meme on fucking 4chan and think it's gonna inform you about you know why jewish people have historically flourished in certain industries anyway Back to Ye. So obviously he's on the 4chan memes now. So things are bad. And then there was another uh, news story came out in Rolling Stone. Uh, just to compound problems. This was an exclusive uh, report on Rolling Stone. It was people that used to work on the Yeezys project came out. And I mean, this is just, this report is just insane. Uh, Kanye West used porn bullying and mind games to control his staff. Former Yeezy team members claim West showed them explicit images of Kim Kardashian and used fear of manipulation to assert dominance. A scathing open letter to Adi Adidas, I'm going to keep saying it right, uh, claims execs turned their moral compasses off. And I will read you the extract here, which is just wild. And it just shows you how, like, surrounded by enablers, uh, people that have turned a blind eye to some of his uh, worst excesses. Pete Fox, who served as the president of Yeezy in 2016, remembers West bonding one-on-one -on -one with the misfits and art nerds of Yeezy startup days, even amid the release of The Life of Pablo. If he likes you and wants you on the team, he's super charming, Fox explains, adding, if he didn't like you or if something happened, he'd fly off the handle and it'd be over. Asked about the allegations that West showed porn to Yeezy staff, Fox tells Rolling Stone, I never looked at porn with him or anything like that, but we would look at things together that maybe would be surprising to people. In high fashion, there's lots of sexy, controversial things that maybe they reference or look at as opposed to a company like Adidas, where you would never show any nudity in a mood board. 
Fox was the only person who agreed to go on the record with his name for this article. Every other Yeezy and Adidas staffer and contractor, as well as the authors of the open letter to Adidas, requested an anonymity to speak candidly, citing Adidas company policy, possible legal action after signing a non-disclosure agreement, that thing again, and fear of public reprisal by West. None of the people interviewed for this article would say if they formally complained at Adidas management concerning West's behaviour, but a former Yeezy and Adidas staffer recalled an atmosphere in which West praised some employees while belittling staff as he publicly supported just weeks, if not moments, earlier. Playing mind games, one former staffer called it. After one disagreement, for example, West made a young female designer of colour sit on the floor for a meeting that lasted hours, according to a former staffer in the room. You don't deserve to sit at the table, West said. No wonder why he didn't want senior business managers in the room, the open letter alleges. He wanted to continue to use his power to violate you in a quiet way and threaten your role and existence within the project. One afternoon in early 2018, according to a high-ranking employee, West sat at a bench in the back of the open Calabasas workplace. He liked to call the white box for a job interview with a female candidate. The senior footwear designer was presenting a portfolio on a laptop across the table from West, recalls the employee. When West interrupted to give the designer similar advice to what the employee says West told Yeezy staff on more than one occasion. If you ever get stuck creatively, he said, just watch porn for 10 minutes. The woman paused, attempting to continue with her presentation, only for Wes to continue. If you're going to be part of Yeezy, we say crazy shit here. you got to stick with it. We keep moving. We keep creating. Throughout the job interview, the employee claims West was trying to vet her to see if she would call him out on it or if she would be able to roll with it. West, uh, the employee remembers West saying... We create products of passion. I literally want to fuck my shoes. That's how good they are. Another former staffer uh, said, the footwear design team had all uh, but forgotten about one new model of Yeezys, then, was sh then received a text from West that said, we really need this shoe to be done because all I think about is Kim's ass and this shoe. So you can dig into that. It's like, it's a long one. It's a, it's a roller coaster for sure. Then it also came out that he'd paid a settlement to one of those staff from this project. And here it is, folks. Here's what everybody knew anyway. Uh, he paid a settlement to a former employee who alleged he praised Hitler and Nazis during business meetings. Legal document show. Yay! Paid a settlement to a former employee who alleged that he had used anti-Semitic language in the workplace, according to documents reviewed by NBC News. In addition, six people who have worked with Ye or witnessed him in professional settings over the past five years said they heard him praise Adolf Hitler or mention conspiracy theories about Jewish people. Three of them are former employees or collaborators, and they said they recalled multiple instances of Ye's use, of Ye using anti-Semitic language. The three other people said they recalled a 2018 incident in which Ye went on an anti-Semitic tirade in an interview at tmz's offices their accounts as well as the settlement suggest that Ye has used such language for years in more instances than previously known to the public well before his recent anti-semitic comments online and in interviews came to light resulting in his losing a wave of business uh, Ryder Rips, a conceptual artist who worked with Ye on and off from 2014 to 2018, said he recalled multiple times when Ye spoke positively about Hitler and the Nazis or mentioned anti-Jewish conspiracies during meetings in the summer and fall of 2018. Rips, who is Jewish, said he didn't push back against Ye's comments at the time, but thought they didn't seem that dangerous. After Ye's most recent waiver statements, however, Rips said he sees things differently. This is dangerous and disgusting and actually violent, he said. With this pattern that's happening and with the doubling down and tripling down on all of this, it's pretty obvious that there is some kind of disgusting, hate-filled, strange Nazi obsession. So I want to give you a bit of trivia because I don't think people remember this. Now, also, by the way, spoiler, uh, I've never been a Kanye West fan. I've never liked his music. I think he's one of the most overrated musicians of all time. I've said this repeatedly, like, I just, I, I, the only thing Ye ever did that I kind of fucked with ever was when he did that uh, 
post-Hurricane Katrina call out to George Bush, who is a fucking vile war criminal that should be in prison. But anyway, he was so wildly popular and wildly famous. You would always get these stories. You would always read, you would always hear stories about him. So back in 2018, there was an actual story, and you can Google this. He released an album called Yay, right? In 2018, Yay. Now, he's called Yay now, isn't he? He's changed his name, not Kanye West anymore. He's just Yay. He's become Yay. The album's Yay. Everything's Yay. But, the story that went around was that Ye didn't want to call the album Ye. He wanted to call the album Hitler. That was the working title that he had for it. He just wanted to release an album called Hitler after he'd read Mein Kampf. And that was in 2018. And again, Google it. Look it up. I know these things sound ridiculous, but this, this is real life. This is really happening. And like all these idiots now like all these you know fucking tucker carlson's and all these people how are you oh i can't believe oh anti semitic it's been there for years everybody knows about it it's not new you can probably dig up stuff from like 2015 as well anyway now we get to the real crazy shit i woke up on november 26 i do my usual i'm a cup of coffee Let's have a look what's been happening overnight on Twitter. Get the news feed. Start picking through the bullshit. Where do I need to be? How do I get myself correct? And I saw a video. And it was Ye. And he was in an airport. And next to him was the, the, the Groiper gremlin, Nick Fuentes. I looked at it. I thought, nah, that's, that's edited. That's a joke because he said these anti-Semitic things. And we all know Nick Fuentes is obviously an anti-Semite that's been, you know, deplatformed for his anti-Semitism. And he claims he's on a no-fly list, but like everything else out his mouth, that's probably bullshit. So, I, nah, that can't be real. But there it was again. And there it was again. And there it was again. And everyone was talking about it. And then, apparently, they were off to Mar-a-Lago to see Donald Trump. Ye was off to see his friend with a new friend. And I was like, this cannot be happening. This this is the worst thing ever, actually. Like, this is um, the Axios report about it. Trump talks with a white nationalist, Nick Fuentes, at Mar-a-Lago. Now, I don't want to misrepresent Nick Fuentes, as I wouldn't misrepresent anyone. But what I will say is, Things I've seen and heard him say. He is a Holocaust denier. He is definitely anti-Semitic. He denies that he is a white supremacist. But I distinctly remember him using racial epithets and denigrating black people on a stream. And obviously, he is probably the most notable figure in the self-styled Groiper movement. And so, obviously, is probably best known for the debates he's had with Destiny. Maybe for, like, the more main, the, the more normie audience. Anyway, he was with Ye. So, right, unquestionably now, all you have to do to, get, to talk to Ye is be an anti-Semite. That's it. That's the secret handshake to get into Ye's inner circle. Frightening, shocking, how anybody, by the way, could sort of at this juncture defend. <laughs> but people were still trying. Well, you know, he's just, he's just, maybe he doesn't know all the things Nick Fuentes said. And maybe he's just like talking to people of different view. I'm like, guys, guys, this is all indefensible, guys. It's only going to make you look bad, and it's only going to get worse. So, they then go to see Trump, and Trump lets them in. <laughs> if there is ever any doubt that Trump... Uh, uh, all of you dickheads who were saying he's been playing five-dimensional Jenga the whole time. He's a moron. He's a moron. Yay, one of the most toxic assets at this time turns up with possibly one of the only other people, you know, a full, dyed-in-the-wall, anti-Semite, white supremacist griper, and you let him in, and you have dinner with him. Are you fucking stupid? The midterms tell you 
Trump is already on the ropes. And if you want to know more, and, and yet he's declared that he'll run for president in 2024 and ahead of the midterms to get some political capital off that and then do not, no campaigning whatsoever. But here's the reality, right? Here's what's going on. If you go and look at the data in swing voters, there was a study, people who identify as swing voters, and they analyzed 40,000 of them, and they asked them how they felt about DeSantis and Trump. And it was overwhelmingly negative towards Trump. The data just was people, swing voters can't have anything to do with him, and they don't feel they can vote Republican while Trump is the prospective nominee. Right. Meanwhile, DeSantis, huge gains in swing voters. Remember, just won a fucking purple state by like 20 points. Trump's done. Trump will not even be the nominee in 2024. Take that to the bank. If he keeps going and going and going and demanding fealty and all this, GOP will fall in line with the Dems and the January 6th committee and they'll do everything they can to preclude him from running for office. Just to get rid of the headache. Trump is done. He is over. So for Trump to do this while he's already on the ropes and give this up, like, this is this is inexcusable. You have met with Nick Fuentes. You have met with Nick Fuentes and yay while he's in the middle of an anti-Semitic diatribe. How are you going to defend that? How can you ever defend that? Forget even if you're secretly kind of cool with it all. The fucking optics of this, you fucking clown. But this is what I mean. Trump never was smart. That was the one thing he wasn't. He just cut through a lot of bullshit. The way Axios do their write-ups, for those that don't know, is they give you the facts. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a good way to get... It's a good publication. It's biased like all the others, of course. But it's a good way to get... The facts and the, the, you know, the whys, why it's important, all of that stuff in just a nice, easily digestible format. So you can see here, uh, Trump had direct engagement with a man labeled a white supremacist by the Justice Department one week after declaring his 2024 candidacy. It's likely to draw renewed outrage. Uh, Fuentes, who frequently promotes racist and anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, have been spotted with Ye at Mar-a-Lago, but reports erroneously suggest that he did not have dinner with the former president. It turns out they did. Uh, Kanye West very much wanted to visit Mar-a-Lago. Our dinner meeting was intended to be Ye and me only, but he arrived with a guest whom I'd never met and knew nothing about, Trump said in a statement. By the way, at that point, maybe don't let them in. Maybe say, not now, yay. A Trump spokesman did not provide comment on additional reporting about the dinner. And this is, as we'll get to, what Fuentes says. A source familiar with the dinner conversation told Axios that Trump seemed very taken with Fuentes. Impressed that the 24-year-old was able to rattle off statistics. I wonder which statistics he was rattling off. And recall speeches dating back to his 2016 campaign. Paraphrasing the conversation, the source said Fuentes told the president he preferred him to be authentic and that Trump seemed scripted and unlike himself during his recent 2024 campaign announcement speech. Trump responded, you like it better when I just speak off the cuff, the source said. Fuentes replied that he did, calling Trump an amazing president when he was unrestrained. There was a lot of fawning back and forth, the source said. Fuentes told Trump that he represented a side of Trump's base that was disappointed with his newly caused, the worst side, the, with his newly cautious approach, especially with what some far-right activists view as a lack of support for those charged in the January the 6th Capitol attack. And by the way, you will notice... People said this is all garbage and Fuentes is lying and probably didn't even have the balls to speak to Trump. Trump released a video saying, guys, in the January 6th attacks, don't worry. I'm going to come and get you out and we're going to overturn this injustice. He literally said it a few days after this. It tallies up with what the source is saying. I'm as skeptical of anonymous sourcing when it comes to Trump as anyone. But it, it syncs up. Trump didn't disagree with Fuentes, but said he has advisors who want him to read off teleprompters and be more presidential. Notably, Trump referred to himself as a politician, which he's been loath to do in the past. Fuentes also told Trump that he would crush potential 2024 Republican rivals in a primary, including the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis. Trump asked for Fuentes' opinion on other candidates as well. Trump at one point turned to Ye and said, I really like this guy. He gets me according to the source, and that should terrify everyone. To be honest, I don't believe the president knew who the hell Fuentes was, the source said. 
Trump asked if Fuentes was on social media, such as Truth Social. Yeah, everyone's on Truth. The former president's alternative to Twitter. Fuentes told Trump that he was on Truth Social, but he'd been banned from the social media platform Getter because Trump advised that Jason Miller, the CEO of the company, wasn't a fan of his. Trump's asked whether it was because Fuentes was on the fringe of his supporter base. The source said Fuentes acknowledged that he was, saying he's one of those people who got banned from everything. So there you have it. Trump meeting with Nick Fuentes and yay in some sort of anti-Semitic uh, cauldron. And then it's like a game of shithouse bingo. Milo Yiannopoulos claims he set up Fuentes' dinner to make Trump's life miserable. The right-wing provocateur says he helped arrange for a white supremacist to attend dinner with Trump and Kanye West, right? Now, as we're going to get to, Milo Yiannopoulos has returned from the internet exile and has paired up with Nick Fuentes. And what Milo was doing, by the way, if you can believe this, Milo, who, when I knew him personally, was one of the most flaming homosexuals I've ever met in my life, one of the most flamboyant gay men I've ever met, was running a gay conversion center. Like, it... <laughs> now... <laughs> We're going to have to talk about this because there's probably videos on my YouTube channel and clips and stuff where I've talked about Milo because, spoiler, just to make my life fucking crazy, I did get headhunted by Milo. I did end up spending seven months working at Breitbart in the tech section. This might be news to some of you. Uh, most of you already know this. I did a video explaining why I went there. And I, I wanted to talk about this at some point. I was maybe going to hit Destiny up and, and talk about it on his stream. Since it's, everything's coming full circle in the end of days. But anyway, if you go back to like 2015 when I was there, you probably find me saying things like, uh, you know, Milo never said anything racist around me and stuff. And he never did. I want to make that abundantly clear. There was nothing ever to suggest he was a racist that I saw directly. He was edgy, cheeky. He said transphobic things I used to argue about with him tooth and nail. But never, never anything racist, never anything anti-Semitic. He was still posing as being half Jewish, something he subsequently said was a lie the whole time. It was just a way for him to avoid being called anti-Semitic, apparently. Now, I said all that. And then a few things happened. And as I said, I was talking about these with another former member of uh, the Breitbart tech section. Because, I mean, you can't even imagine what a cross to bear it is to have worked there and to be associated with these people now. And what we should have done, what I realized is I was there when Ben Shapiro worked there. And when he, when he left, we all should have gone out the door. We all should have followed him out. And we we would we we wouldn't be in this position we're all in now. But anyway, the first thing that happened was BuzzFeed published a bunch of leaked fucking emails, where Milo was talking about the alt right, and uh, which he'd always vehemently told me, you know, listen, the the lefties are doing that thing where they're co opting a phrase and saying that the alt right are racist, and this is what it really means. There's some truth. To the fact that the alt-right as a term didn't always mean what it means. But it's very clear what it means and what it meant and what it became and sort of morphed into. And they were still using it, right? So there was that. All of the stuff with Bannon, Steve Bannon, who, you know, no love lost for him. But then after that, there was a leaked video of Milo and he was out drinking with Richard Spencer. You know, an actual Nazi. A man who doesn't shy away from that label or being called that. And he was drinking with him. And Milo was singing. And Richard Spencer was doing the Roman salute, the, the Nazi salute. And everyone thought it was hilarious, all the people there. And that video came out. And I'm like, well, that's that. I've never publicly spoke about this part, this aspect of it. Because obviously it's just like, let sleeping dogs lie. He wasn't, he was unpersoned and good. And that was the end of it. But, like, what a piece of shit. Like, what a fucking piece of shit. First of all, used all of the people he recruited on that fucking tech section saying it would never get into that. And that he wasn't that. And obviously, later we'd find out he was. Like, why Why you even go and associate 
with the likes of Richard Spencer, I don't know. Then obviously as well, lied about his entire identity the entire time to the point where I don't even know who the fuck he is. I never did. He's just a bullshit artist. He's just a con man, just a fucking charlatan. And quite clearly now, I heard a clip that he was being interviewed by Roosh, brilliant, a meeting of minds. And he said that he was never Jewish. And he even said that there was a certain type of Jew that he would happily see killed. And it's there. It's a clip of him saying effectively that I'm paraphrasing. Con Destroyer says, Milo, would you acknowledge that the Jews have an evolutionary survival strategy of subverting civilizations and see white man as their racial competitors? I will, um, I will tell you that I have been a student of uh, E. Michael Jones for some time, that I have read Kevin MacDonald, that I have... I. Familiar with all the literature on this subject, I have a great deal of sympathy for some of these arguments, but a lot of it also seems deeply ridiculous to me. Um, I draw a quite crisp, clean red line between Orthodox Jews who actually practice their faith, who seem on the whole to be thoroughly decent people to me, and secular liberal Jews who, as far as I'm concerned, all should all be hanging from City Hall. Okay, next one is uh, Milo and Roosh. Oh, have you read Kevin McDonald's Culture of Critique? Uh, Milo just said that he did. Uh, if not, I would yes. assume you're familiar with the thesis. Yes, we have read that book. Uh, Dylan Volk said, Milo, I'm kind of shocked that you are not ethnically Jewish given your verbal IQ. Yeah, so I always thought that I was. My mother is a pathological liar, and one of the reasons that I ended up gay was her like not having a dad around and having an overbearing, crazy mother, which is one of the things that I've realized thanks to therapy. And when I realized, when I started to realize that my mother lied to me about literally everything, and that much of my childhood was a complete fabrication, I began to ask questions about whether I really was, in fact, everything she told me. Is my mother actually? And it turns out no. So uh, in that interview that I did with Dave Rubin, I was saying what I believed to be true, which is that I was ethnically Jewish, but it turns out, in fact, that I'm not. Um, am I surprised that I'm not Jewish because of a high verbal IQ? Um, no. I mean, you seem to be suggesting that only Jews have it, quite clearly. That's not the case. Like, fuck this guy. I'm ashamed, ashamed to have ever been associated with this guy. Like, absolutely ashamed. I'm ashamed to have ever gone to bat for him because the guy, I guess, I was trying to defend didn't even fucking exist. I remember when that BuzzFeed story broke, again, I was talking to this guy the other night, you know, there was people who worked on the tech section that just, we just, you know, just did game reviews. And they're like, fucking, their, their family stopped talking to them for being associated with Breitbart. Like, just that's that. No more Thanksgivings, fuck you. Crazy, you know? And like Milo put us all, like, obviously we're all adults. We all made a choice to go and work there. But you have to understand, you know, if you knew the Breitbart that was like, you know, and Andrew Breitbart's Breitbart, which is the one I sort of knew vaguely about as a British person, you would never have thought that people like Milo would be the people they then turned out to be. I mean, Breitbart historically has been pro is very pro Israel, for example. They've got they've got an office in Israel. To have employed like a fucking virulent anti Semite and like just a thoroughly awful person is like shameful for any publication let alone one that's already questionable because it publishes fucking you know climate change fucking denial garbage and all sorts of other bullshit so when i saw all this come up again and we'll get back to the news story i thought it was absolutely important because it's not anything i've ever done to like you know essentially disavow and and say like listen you can be wrong about stuff in your life and you just gotta own up to it uh, I've talked before, I've said I regret working at Breitbart, but now it's like, it's it's worse than that. Because this person, like, he's back. It's not like, he's not just some, like, comedic eccentric I knew in the past. He's back and he's doing reprehensible shit and saying reprehensible things again. And he's unbelievably close to, you know, political power and influence. Fuck that guy. Like, fuck him. He fucked everybody over. He's full of shit. He's a fucking liar. His views are fucking despicable. So, yeah, um, you know, f like 100%. Anyway, so Milo Yiannopoulos and Nick Fuentes are, are, are working together as political operatives with Ye. And for what? To what end? Uh, well, after Mar-a-Lago, 
he decided that he would run for president with Milo Yiannopoulos and Nick Fuentes running his campaign. <laughs> I can't... The things that I'm talking about, guys. Like, for fuck's sake, Kanye West announced this 2024 presidential bid. Uh, rapper Kanye West has said he intends to run for president in 2024 despite facing several scandals over his recent behavior. One of the fucking wild stories that came out of the meeting in Mar-a-Lago is he asked Trump to be his vice president as if Trump would ever acquiesce to anybody. Like, yeah, it is. He claimed he asked Donald Trump to be his running mate. West previously ran for president in 2020. But that campaign flopped, attracting just 70,000 votes. Yeah, you all forgot about that, didn't you? You all forgot about, yeah. His latest claims came in a video posted after West was spotted at Trump's Mar-a-Lago Golf Club earlier, accompanied by Nick Fuentes, a prominent white nationalist. West said his request for a running mate left the former president and recently launched his own re-election campaign most Perturbed in a video titled Mar-a-Lago Debrief, West claimed Trump started basically screaming at me at the table, telling me I'm going to lose. Has that ever worked for anyone in history? When he ran for president in 2020, he announced his campaign so late he couldn't appear on the ballot in at least six states. Uh, for his 2024 bid, the rapper suggested he had enlisted alt-right commentator Milo Yiannopoulos as his campaign manager. A former editor at the right-wing publication Breitbart, Mr. Yiannopoulos was largely shunned by mainstream conservatives after a video emerged in 2017 of him appearing to condone pedophilia. He said the comments were gallows humour and stated his disgust at the sexual abuse of minors. Most recently, Mr. Yiannopoulos worked as an intern for Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yes, Forgot about that, sorry, Saga. You know, because crazy attracts crazy. Couldn't even hack it as an intern for fucking Marjorie Taylor Greene. Even she was like, fuck this. That's Ye's campaign manager, apparently. So, yes, he's going to be going and having a presidential bid. Meanwhile, of course, obviously, in the press, Trump's like, listen, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know he denied the Holocaust. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So, you know all that bit already. And then... Tim Poole had the full Monty on his podcast. He invited Ye, he invited Milo, and he invited Nick Fuentes to come on and do a group podcast where Tim Poole, everyone's favourite beanie-wearing journalist, was going to give him uh, a, a, a supposed uh, grilling, except... It didn't go down like that because he... When, when I found out that they tried to put me in jail, it was like a dog was biting my arm and I, 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 I almost shed a tear, almost. But I still walked in stride through it. Yeah. I, I, think, I think they've been extremely unfair to you. I think. Who was they, though? We can't Pro say who they Pro is, Pro can press. we? I'm not using the, I, don't, I don't use the word as the, as the way I guess you, you guys use. I'm, I'm talking about... It is about them, though, isn't it? I mean, because, <laughs> no. and, and because when you think <laughs> about not. it, consider it. In 2018... What do you mean it's not? It, what, what do I mean, like, uh, uh, okay, so how about... Are you leaving? Are you afraid of the press? He's on. So the the podcast didn't even last any amount of time at all. Uh, after they flew in there and were taking pictures of them in the in the plane that they went in the private jet that they commissioned to go out there, and as you can see there, Kanye immediately straight in at the anti-Semitic talking points. Tim Poole says, no, I don't use the... When I say they, I mean the media. I think the media have been unfair to you. Ye is saying Jewish people and the media, it's all interchangeable. Tim Poole says, no, it's not. And that's that. Storms off. He will not even entertain a discussion about it right now. He's unreachable. And, unfortunately for him, surrounded by some of the fucking worst elements in his life that are only going to reinforce things. Like, the, the prospect of a mentally disturbed person with anti-Semitic tendencies being in the company of Fuentes and, and, and Milo Yiannopoulos is just, it, it's a, a recipe for the worst things. It's just ap an absolute uh, disaster. Also, as well, compared himself to Martin Luther King, which, great. So, what's funny is, even after that, Tim Pool legendary like insightful political commentator i think yay 
could actually win the presidency. Let that one just, <laughs> let that just fucking sit for a moment, right? There's just, no, there is no way, there's not even a metric that you could point to and say, I could make an argument with this metric. Disastrous first presidential campaign before this shit. No, it just, and Tim Pool does this, man. It's like, it's, it's really frustrating because, again, back in the day, Tim Pool came on my podcast when Tim Pool was, was going independent and he was on the come up. And I knew Tim Pool again from the Occupy Wall Street coverage where the independent journalism really flourished because to get in among the activists, you had to be an independent journalist. If you came from a corporation, if you represented one of the big things, you were ushered out essentially. So I knew Tim Pool from that and had him on. And he was like a really normal guy, very interested in altern alternative and new media. And I don't know what happens to people. Like, once you get, like, I don't know, is it like 300,000 followers? Is that the cutoff where you just, you become an you become a v version of yourself? You become a caricature? I don't know. But I see it happen to, like, loads of people. And, like, Tim Pool's political analysis used to be reasonably astute. Somewhere around the time in, in, I don't know, like 2018, maybe, when he was screaming about civil war, we're definitely going to have a civil war, we're definitely, that was when it was just like, dude, like, is that fucking hat on too tight or something? I don't know what's going on, bro, because it's like, th that is not an accurate reading of things. You know, he was doing Infowars stuff, he was promoting prepper, doomsday prepper fucking shelter stuff. It's like, what's... I, I just don't get it. It's like, I think he's an intelligent dude. I think he's a successful dude. I think he's done some great content. But I don't know if there's like some Curse of the Richard Lewis podcast or like, Curse of the Richard Lewis Association I'm not aware of. But he's off, he's off the fucking deep end. And he was another fucking one of these youtubers content creators in their own little bubble talking about how there was going to be a red tsunami in the midterms when anybody again looking at the data it's all out there pollsters can be wrong but you can get in amongst multiple polling data different types of polls different types of surveys you can get boots on the ground reporting from local newspapers talking about what's going on down the polling stations and just read it and and make informed opinions about likely outcomes you can never predict the future with 100 percent accuracy but you can make smart predictions anyway he was one of the red tsunami guys and now to say this well yay to win yeah you could win the presidency is one of the most uh one of the most absurd fucking takes i think i've ever 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 seen anyway you get to that fateful day <laughs> that, that uh tim pool said that and well i don't i don't even know if i can play the clips like i just don't know the rules i'm i'll have griff edit them in he he went on info wars okay he turned up and this is how you know you're in for a fucking good time looking like this he it was in a full biker outfit with a hood pulled over his face clutching a holy bible the entire time i was tired of picking up the yahoo and the netting so for now he's just netting i know some people call him bb no, it's something you call him yeah, Yahoo, but we're gonna call him Nettin. What you want, Nettin? Hey, yay, yeah, right after this, I'm gonna say you're crazy. I'm gonna take your, your family away from you. We're not done with you yet. You cannot cause free thought. We have to control the history books, we have to control the banks, and we have to go and kill people. Also, we're in the pedophilia. Ha, ha, ha. So. And in a little while, hopefully you're going to take the mask off, because this, is this actually gay here? <laughs> but the things he said during this broadcast were just beyond the pale. So much so, even Alex Jones couldn't believe it. He, he visibly winced at what he was saying. He said crazy things. Yeah, we've got to stop dissing the Nazis. I've said it, the most Nazi-like activities I've seen um, and, and the Nazis, in my view, were thugs that shook people down to a lot of really bad things. 
But they did good things, too. We're going to stop dissing the Nazis all the time. Okay. We're, we're going to get to that. You get, I don't uh, he said he loved Hitler. That was another thing he said. He said he loved all people, uh, including Hitler. You're not a Nazi. You don't deserve to be called that and demonized. Well, I, I, see, I, I see good things about Hitler also. The Jew, I love everyone, and Jewish people are not going to tell me, you can love, um, you know, us, and you can love what we're doing to you with the contracts, and you can love what we're, you know, what we're pushing with the pornography. But this guy that invented highways, invented the very microphone that I use as a musician, you can't say out loud that this person ever did anything good, and I'm done with that. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. And that was brought up. Alex Jones, unfortunately, teed him up to say it. Because Alex Jones said, people are criticizing you. You're not Hitler. You're not a Nazi. Spoiler, Alex. He's been repeatedly saying anti-Semitic things for approximately four years. At this point, you can certainly say he's an anti-Semite. And... The bottom line is everybody had to come out and they were like, you know what? This is it. This is the end. Kim.com said it. Uh, there was some other like entrepreneurial type said it. They just basically said, look, this is just beyond the pale. Uh, you know, this, 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 this is where it has to be shut down now at this point. And so it filtered back on to Twitter and he started tweeting about it. Now he'd already done some pretty provocative tweets because he got elon musk unbanned him and this was one of the things that people uh got you know a bit upset about uh they were like elon's not taking us seriously he's um unbanning dangerous people he's unbanning yay and you can see here when kanye west was unbanned provocatively he tweeted, uh, Shalom. First testing, testing, seeing in my Twitter is unblocked. Shalom. So just to goad everybody into doing that. Uh, just goad everybody. He did that rather. Uh, then he started tweeting. He started letting Alex Jones was filmed on InfoWars, uh, tweeting from his account. Alex Jones is obviously banned on Twitter. That's a violation of, uh, the TOS. Then on top of that, uh, he tweeted, and I'll, I'll be able to bring the picture up in the YouTube video. He tweeted a Star of David and a swastika combined. He took a Star of David and put a swastika in the middle and tweeted it out. And so at this point, Elon Musk tweeted him and said, all the while, by the way, while Ye was doing this, he was tweeting out, Love, love, love. I love everyone. I love Jews and you know, all of this stuff. Uh, but tweeting, you know, swastikas. And then Elon Musk said, sorry, you have gone too far. This is not love. And yay, yay tweeted that out. Basically said, go on then, you're going to have to suspend me. And so he posted that picture of Elon Musk, topless at the beach, fat, mo mooby, and tweeted that out and said, let this be my last tweet. And Elon Musk said, yes, let it be your last tweet. Uh, and then he was banned. Now, somewhere in all of this, by the way, uh, he also was going to buy everyone's favorite uh, social media platform, uh, Parler, uh, to sort of offset the fact that he'd been essentially banned uh, from Twitter, saw it all coming. But not even Parler want to sell. They're like, look, it's just in the interests of both parties that we don't uh we we don't actually go ahead uh with this deal uh, so he's not getting parlor he's not getting anything he's been banned off twitter he's essentially unpersoned and that is where we arrive up to the present day where yay's career looks to be in absolute tatters um the presidential run he'll probably still go ahead with it he's gonna piss all his money up away and no doubt milo and who's got a history of just taking money and running with it and spending other people's money that's essentially how he got to where he is and fuentes you just can't believe you know he was streaming to 300 people on fucking d live and now he's next to kanye west 
meeting Donald Trump, these people are going to take all his money and piss it all up against the wall and waste all of his fucking time and they're going to just have a bunch of fucking a anecdotes. It's just fucking stupid and horrible and awful. And yay, other than the illness, has only got himself to blame. Um, I've got to say, he also, when he was on InfoWars, he did try to insult Ben Shapiro and he got the joke wrong. He fucked it up. Because, again, I don't think he's the brightest guy to begin with. But he wanted to say the only exercise Ben Shapiro does is picking up shekels. That was the, uh, that was the fucking joke he made. But he forgot to say shekels and said shackles instead. He got it wrong. Ben Shapiro, uh, despite uh, the abuse uh, he was getting... Um, basically said, look, Ye is clearly suffering from a mental breakdown. It's an act of cruelty to have him on the air at this point. He needs treatment, not a spotlight. Which I thought was very uh, gracious of him to sort of say that in light of the anti-Semitic abuse that he directly threw at him. Uh, but of course, not everyone was as gracious. The Iron Sheik said, Kanye West, uh, fuck you, fuck the Nazis, fuck yourself forever. You are the jabroni of the earth. And so let's all hear it for the Iron Sheik. So, there you go. That is the downfall of Ye. Just as uh, some final thoughts to wrap it up. I And I've tried to cover as much of it as possible, as you can see. Probably a bit slipshod in some areas. And no doubt people will correct me uh, when we get down into the uh, YouTube comments. When the video is kind of edited and put together. But, yes... He's a, a desperately ill person. Yes, he's surrounded by some of the worst people imaginable that are going to exploit him. But equally, he said things that you have to be held accountable for. And that accountability is going to look very bad. I don't know where his career is going to go from here. I can't see any American corporate clothing lines wanting to work with him anytime soon. I think that boat has sailed. I don't even know right now um, who would uh, want to... Uh, kind of, you know, represent him as a talent agent. I don't know who would want to put out an album recorded by him. Lord knows what kind of album he would record while he's in this fucking state. I can't even begin to imagine. And, uh, you know, Nick Fuentes turning up and doing a verse on a Yay album. Like, at that point, doesn't the world just fucking explode and it's it's all over? But it's um, it's... You know, it, it, it's only going one way. There's no coming back from where the position he's put himself in. And the only way it's going to change and the only way there's ever going to be any way back to grace uh, is going to be if he gets the help he needs, gets the medication he needs, levels the fuck out and comes back and basically apologizes and starts to atone. I'm sure as a man of faith, he will appreciate that fucking road to Damascus moment. But there you go. Just a terrible, terrible time. And that is that. That's everything you need to know about from yay to nay. Well, yay's got his mask. He's a superhero. And I represent the bad guys. David Ike's uh, little reptoids. So, now your enemy's in here hosting the show with you, yay. We got Nick Fuentes, one of my best buddies. He works for us, does a really good job. He's over there with us. Oh, now he's turning to Alex Jones. So what are we going to do here? Yay.